I'm so excited that you guys have stuck around for this part and to, to be able to do this. Um, the rest of the presentations I've done 100 times and the panels that I've been on 100 times, but this is my first time moderating this panel and I'm super excited. It's just like a really great part to see this kind of end product of what we were doing. The whole reason that we're here is to, to build families, to have kids that are one day going to grow up and be teenagers. Um, <laughs> Um, and that's just, it's just really exciting. So I'm so happy to be here. So um, again, I'm Michelle Pine. I'm on the board of directors of Men Having Babies and a two-time surrogate myself. And if you guys um, here would just um, share with us a minute here of who you are and, and your surrogacy story. Okay, uh, I'm Kevin Gibson Weinberger. I'm from Los Angeles, California. Um, I was born through Growing Generations, um, just like my story. Yeah, like, okay. like you have, um, do you have two dads? And yes, a I have two dads. I have a surrogate and then I have a biological mother. Um, so, yeah, it's basically That's the it. regular process. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? <coughs> can you hear, can you guys hear her? Okay. okay. I'm Emily Ross Danson. Um, I'm from Los Angeles as well. I have two dads and a twin brother. I was also born through growing generations. <laughs> Um, I had a surrogate and an egg donor who I am friends with. She's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. um, my name is Tomer Pool Dayan. Um, I have two dads, uh, one of which is Ron. Um, <laughs> I'm from New York City uh, and I have a twin sister. Okay, awesome. So, how did you come <clears throat> to know your birth story? How did you come to know um, that you were born through surrogacy? I can go we can go the same way. We'll, we'll go back and forth. Okay. Um, well, it's like kind of hard to mm -hmm. remember the exact time where my parents told me. I think it was more of a progressive understanding in terms of knowing that how I was born was not, you know, the normal way of being born. Um, and I don't think it really came in like a one, like bam, like here's your story. Um, it was more of like a introduction, a progressive introduction to it. Um, but yeah, I think your knowledge of what it is kind of comes as you grow up and mature. Um, I don't really remember when my parents told me. Um, I asked them and they said they don't really remember either. Um, <laughs> but I just, I just remember like always knowing. I think they told me at a really young age. Um, I know my brother didn't really understand. He used to tell everyone that he was in his daddy's belly for four days. <laughs> so that's not... <laughs> my dad told me I should tell everyone that. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I don't really remember, but I think it was also like a, a growing thing that I like understood more and more. Um, yeah, as they previously, previously said, um, it's always kind of been a gradual thing, always like an age-appropriate explanation. My parents would always a answer any of the questions that my sister and I would ask, and it was like never this one time, like, you were born through surrogacy, this is how it happened. It was always like gradual, like, and I've always just remembered knowing as, as far back as I can remember. I think that really speaks to that piece about open communication and honesty that we've talked about so much and that I think it's fascinating for me that it's not some point in time that you remember and maybe to me that makes it seem like it's less traumatic. Like it wasn't like, oh, I had this day and then I found this out and then my world changed. It's like this is just who I am and this is how my life is and that's just, that's just, part, of, part, that's just part of me. Yeah. Um, what is your relationship to your egg donor and your surrogate? So are these the same person? Do you know them? And what kind of relationship do you have? And we'll start down on this end. Um, yeah, so for me, it's a little interesting. My egg donor is actually my aunt um, on my other father's side. So I obviously do have a pretty close relationship with her. Uh, she lives far away, so I only see her once or twice a year. But um, we're still very close. That being said, I wouldn't say I have a different relationship with her than I do with my other aunts. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's been pretty normal. Um, and then my surrogate, I have not seen in a very long time. Um, but I don't really think that I feel like I'm lacking something because of that. And I know that if I ever wanted to see her, um, I could easily do so. Um, so I recently got in contact with my egg donor, probably like a year ago. Found her on Facebook. Um, and friended her and messaged her, and she's like one of the best people I've ever met. 
She's really cool. She feels like a sister to me. Um, I don't see her a whole time because she lives in San Diego, but I'm meeting her next weekend, and I'm meeting my half-brother, actually. But um, I'm not in contact with my surrogate at all, and I don't really feel like I need to be just because she's not related to me. Do you know her? Do you know her? Have you met her before? No. You, no? No. Okay. no. Okay. Well, I met her when that. I was in when her. You... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't remember that. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't have a relationship with either of my surrogate egg donors, um, but I am like in the process of meeting my egg donor. Okay. Um, and it's definitely something I want to do. Um, and I didn't really want to until I saw a picture and you like see yourself in somebody, like, I don't know. It's like, just, it's a, I'm not looking for like another relationship with somebody else. I'm just looking for the like experience of like, wow, like I came from, ha I, I'm half of you. So it's pretty cool. Um, what about their families? And, and if anything is too personal, you absolutely feel free to just like say, no, pass. Um, so you've mentioned the egg donors and knowing them and, and your half-brother, you said. Um, so have you met those people before? Are you excited about that connection or meeting those people? Just like siblings that you have that are out there? Um, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, we like follow each other on social media. So we like know what we each other okay. looks like. Um, I'm excited. I hope he's excited too. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be cool. Tomer, what about you? Because so your cousins are yeah, your so that kind siblings, of makes my cousins, my half siblings. Right. Um, I mean, I guess I would say that those cousins are among my closer cousins, but I think that's kind of unrelated to them being my half siblings. And it's definitely, I, I, I don't think we've ever brought it up, or, but you know, I, I don't know. I guess it's pretty interesting, but I don't think it. I don't. I don't think I feel a different relationship towards those cousins than I do my other cousins. Um, what has been the response from your peers that um, when they um, hear about your um, how you came to be your, in your birth story um, and, and having two dads and has that changed over time were the reactions and the conversations different as a young child um, to what you have now as people have kind of a different understanding of the world you want to start yeah just in addition to the question oh, that you asked earlier about how were you introduced I think I had a lot of books that oh, okay. were um, like especially for kids uh -huh. with um, same-sex parents. Do you parents. remember any of them? Cause there's like one with penguins. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good okay, one. There you go. Great read. <laughs> great read. We have that in the book fair. You can buy it. It's a great one. Um, and like a bunch of other, like, okay. I'm sure. Um, I think those are really important in terms okay. of like, I don't know, children books are like what kind of grow your understanding of like the world mm -hmm. and morals Absolutely. too, I feel like. so. Um, but the qu back to the question at hand, right. what was it again? Response. What has been the response from oh, your yeah. peers? Has that changed over time? Yeah, and the reason why I want to talk about the storybooks is because, you know, people grow up with these stories, um, like whether that's nursery rhymes and it's the mother and father, and that's like the normal thing. Um, and I think that that's how children who are from traditional families um, usually like, you know, here and they grow up and there's a mom, a mommy and a daddy and they have their kid and it's, you know, normal. And then once you get to like talk about it, and like it's normal for me, like as a kid, but it's not normal for them. So of course there was, as a in elementary school, there definitely was some not like negative energy around that, but definitely some confusion. And of course, like confusion makes people uncomfortable. Um, and I wouldn't, I would never say it was hard for me, um, but it was definitely like a sort of struggle in terms of like understanding that my family was abnormal. Um, and I don't think that that's a bad thing. And I think that being abnormal is like a good thing in terms of developing into your own self. Um, but yeah, as I've gotten older, people are, it's like the cool thing. Like, oh, you have two dads, it's so cool. <laughs> and then that's also like, oh, that's, like, it's not cool. It's just like, I don't it's know. It's just what it is. It abnormal is. kind of develops into, into like a cool thing. Mm -hmm. So telling people I have two dads, they're like, wow, that's so cool. Like, um, and telling, I don't know, it's interesting that people, and I have like um, in, in, an interracial, like one of my dad's African American, okay. one of my dad's is white, and people find that cool too. So I mean, like, I don't know, it's, people react differently at different ages and stages, right. so 
overall, I've, I think I've, you kind of learn how to deal with people at different ages. Um, I remember being in elementary school and getting a lot of like weird stuff from my peers. I remember like people saying to me a lot, like, you can't have two dads. And I was like, but I do. <laughs> um, and I, I was confused because I, I was so, I mean, I'm used to it. Like I thought that it was like really normal. So yet again, I think I like, I had to like learn that it wasn't necessarily normal. And I think people find it very cool now. Yeah. People are always like, oh my god, I love gay people when I tell them that I have two dads. It's like, oh, but I don't know. You just like, I've learned to deal with it. It's like not really a big issue at all. Wasn't when I was little either. Um, yeah, so I definitely have had similar experiences. I think growing up in a city like New York or like LA, um, I've definitely had overall like a positive experience or never really any negative experiences. But um, at a younger age, I would say it was a little bit more of like a skepticism, like you can't have two dads, like you have to have a mom. And, and that kind of evolved as I got older into more of like a curiosity and kind of like them saying, oh, that's so cool, like, how, like tell me how that works, like that's really interesting. So I think that, that's definitely been like, it's overall been positive. It's, there's never been any really bad reactions towards it. It's just kind of been different as I've grown older. I think overall also, like, the world's becoming a more like politically correct place where people, yeah, and also people are also very respectful when they ask me questions, um, especially like meeting a lot of new people in college. I've like, people are very like cautious, like, oh, they don't want to offend you. So, I, and like, like I'm never offended by a question because I've, I've gotten these questions like, oh, like, what do you mean you have two dads or all this? Um, but I don't know, it, people are very precautious now. And that most of that it sounds like comes from just a curiosity or, or a lack of knowledge mm -hmm. about it. And then once I know, then okay. Um, and you mentioned about, you know, uh, something that makes me think all of the studies that have been done about families um, coming from gay parents is that kids, kids are doing fine. And um, in many cases, the kids are doing better um, because of uh, one, an intentionality that gay, be pe gay people have to, to have kids. I mean, my husband just, oops, I guess we're having a kid. Um, and then <laughs> where you guys have to really think about it. Um, and then also that you, that you are growing up with this exposure to a variety of things and, and having to, to be able to kind of defend yourself or answer questions or think about yourself in a different way. Um, and then that's making you a better person in the long run, you know. Um, are there any questions or comments, either good or bad, that you get regularly? And we heard one of those of that, you can't have two dads. Um, so are, is there anything else that people say like all the time, either good or bad? Um, I guess kind of as I've said, it's always like a lot of questions about like the process itself, but that, that comes out of a good place. It's out of curiosity, not out of like attacking me. I guess one of the more interesting questions or reactions I've had is uh, my neighbor and longtime family friend when we kind of explained it to her, she, she, always, she used to say, oh, I want two dads. Like, why can't I have two dads? <laughs> so it's definitely been positive overall. Um, I think it's, it's been overall positive as well, especially recently. Um, everyone just thinks it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. I think adding on to what you said about like, oh, I want two dads, I find that people like kind of want, I don't know, people make these comments because they like want that like, Excite, like they find it exciting stuff. Like people always, when I had my bar mitzvah, um, people were saying, oh, I want to be Jewish because I want the money you get from your bar mitzvah. <laughs> so people like, people always want like these benefits. People think having two dads is cool. My parents were like really strict. Mm -hmm. um, and people kind of assume that they're like the fun gay dads, like <laughs> flamboyant. My parents are like very, like not flamboyant. I don't know. I don't know dude. So, um, and like in terms of comments I got, um, it was like the, the regular, oh, like that doesn't exist or things like, not that doesn't exist. I, that's not what I meant. Um, like, how is that possible? Things like that. Somebody told me that I must have come from the ocean. <laughs> like, oh, no, you probably came from the ocean, ocean babies. I was like, oh, okay, sure. buddy, thanks. <laughs> um, and like, I've gotten a bunch of like, I don't know, something like comments and just like, I don't know. I remember once at the airport, we were coming from somewhere and like we had to get like separated at a point um, because they're like, you, like 
I have a conjoined, like Gibson Weinberger, my dad, Danny, who doesn't look like me at all, has Gibson Weinberger, and then my other dad is Weinberger, is his last name. Um, and we, there's like some altercations there, and that's like, you know, a different society, and of course, that is something that you have to be cautious about, um, but that's definitely not something that's, that should be a big concern. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we covered this other question, so I'm not going to go there. We've got some time for some questions, and then sometimes that leads to some other. So I'm going <coughs> to open up for some questions now, if anybody has that they want to ask of these awesome folks. Anything? Um, that's a really good question. Um, thinking back, I guess I can't remember ever not knowing, but I guess for me it, it was kind of obvious because I had one dad who was the sperm donor and the other dad's sister who was the egg donor, but I can't remember a specific time where I was told that. Um, I can't really remember a specific time either. I also remember kind of always knowing. People ask me that a lot, who are you related to? Because people always think that I'm related to my dad that I'm not related to. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, for people, like, they know which one I'm related to. <laughs> <laughs> like, people ask me and they're like, you know. Um, <laughs> I guess that's their nervous reaction of right. questioning, but yeah. I figured it out. Anybody else? We've got lots of time. My, my questions went fast, so. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm, I love that. What, oh, I'm sorry. The question was, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, 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 I think I know what I want to study when I go to college. I'm a high school senior now. I want to study business, but I really don't know where that's going to lead me. Um. I was in community college, dropped out. Um, I'm a tattoo artist. I have a private studio working on that. Yeah. Um, right now I'm studying civil engineering at UC Berkeley. Um, and in terms of what I, uh, well, as a kid, I wanted to do all these things. Like I wanted to be a jeweler. I wanted to be an arsonist. I think I wrote that in my, <laughs> you know, kids go through their phases. That it doesn't have to do with anything having two dads. So don't worry about that. But. Now I've become really interested in sustainability um, and hoping to do something with my degree um, in terms of like water, like desalinization and stuff like that. Desalinization, yeah. I don't know, it's gonna change again, I'm sure. Right, it will. Yeah, go ahead and I'll repeat it. So the question was, um, is, these guys have had the option to reach out to their egg donor, um, and, and how might they have felt if they weren't able to, to, to do that? I can start. Yeah. yeah I, um, I didn't really even think about meeting my egg donor or like knowing her until like recently, like very recently, maybe three months ago. And it's something, I don't know, Right now it's exciting, but if I didn't have the option of ever meeting her, I would be okay with that. Like I have two parents who like love me. The like I don't really need to have like a mom or like a maternal figure in my life. Or I, not that I don't really need I don't. Like I have my two loving parents. Um, and I don't know. I feel like there are a lot of things in life that I just don't know and kind of just like accept and that's like something that I would probably just learn to accept and like you know not as a kid but you know as I mature and grow that's something I'd learn. Um, I don't know I probably would have been fine with it um, I think being like the only girl in my family uh, I, I kind of wanted to I don't want a mother figure um, but like I don't know I can't really describe why I wanted to contact her, but I did. And I think it would be kind of sad if I couldn't, but like, it would be fine. 
Um, yeah, I mean, anything I say, I'm not sure about because I, I don't have that. I, I'm able to, I know who she is, but um, I guess I think I would want to know who she is, but as has kind of been previously said, not for a mother figure, but more just out of curiosity to see who I'm like biologically related to. But I definitely don't think that would be a necessity or like a deal breaker, but I don't know. I feel like it'd be nice to know. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, my question is, do you ever, uh, as far as your extended families are concerned, um, <laughs> Okay, so the question is about the relationship with extended family, particularly in terms of the extended family that is the biologically related to you. Is there a difference in that extended family? Um, yeah, I guess that doesn't really apply to me. I'm biologically related to both sides. Um, and I definitely would say I'm equally close to both of them. Um, I don't have a lot of family, um, like extended family, especially on my biological side. I just have an uncle and he lives in Canada. So I don't really have a connection with him at all. I have more of a connection with my <laughs> non-biological side. Um, Cause I actually have cousins. They're like, I, I don't really know. Just a regular cousin connection. Mm -hmm. We look alike too. So it's like, I don't know. It feels like we're related. Um. I'm, I'd say I'm equally, if not more close to my not biological sign, mm -hmm. side. Um, and especially like my grandma's on both sides. I'm really, I'm not close with, well, one of my grandpas is deceased and the other one I'm not close with really. And I rarely see, but my grandma's I'm both like very close with um, and are very important people in my life. And you know, I call them on Mother's Day, of course, and pay um, that respect to them. But they're very important people in my life. Um, and in terms of cousins, like that was fine. Like especially like having cousins who were visibly different than me, um, that was something that was like never a problem because they were like growing up with like having a cousin who's very different than them. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, just such a key piece to keep in mind that biology is only one aspect of this. It's only one part of the connection that you have with your family. Um, did your does your family um, any of your we talked about just in kind of people in general have any reservations about um, your birth story or how you can be is there any family that you've had concerns with or issues with or that were like yeah. um, definitely in my memory not at all mm -hmm. I know I've heard a couple stories of like uncles or grandparents who are a little skeptical but I've also been told once they saw the baby it was all gone like right. mm -hmm. so it's definitely been all positive for me. I think yeah. that's the same with me. It's been all positive while well, I've been alive, at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Other questions? Uh, I saw your hand first, so you get to go. And then Black, yep, you. you. Uh, with the exception of your mother's actually sitting here, if you were talking to your dads as they were starting the process, mm. what advice or tips, what would you want to tell them? <laughs> well, my, and you, you stole my question. That was our question. That was supposed to be your last question. Oh, sorry. Skip it. Skip it. I'm going to come back. Okay. We're going to come back. Okay. Who, uh, in the, yeah, back in the, yep. Yep. Can you tell us more about the penguin story? I'm just curious. Oh. Yeah. So the penguin story was available at our um, book fair, and it's the takes two to tango. I think is that what it yes. is? Yes. 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 Um, do you guys remember? The, and tango makes three. Yes. Okay. Takes two to tango. Okay. Do you remember? Do you remember the story? It was probably around like, the same experiences I've had in like elementary school. It's like, oh, like this penguin is different from the other penguins <laughs> because, or like, <laughs> this penguin was hanging out with his friends and he was like, oh, like I don't have a mommy and a daddy. Like very simple things, but you know, normalizes it where it's like. And those books are available. I remember reading those books to my kids as I was becoming a surrogate. There's one about a king, the kangaroo pouch. And I read that with my kids to help explain to them what we were doing and how we were oh, helping wow. someone else have a baby and we're this kangaroo and we're, you know, doing that. And so those story books um, are a really great way to kind of start to introduce that different concept and normalize it too. Like, look, there's books about it. We're reading about it. And then my um, son's class actually read that book. 
Um, I knew that they would all have questions and then he would talk about it. So his teacher read the book in class and then they were able to ask questions. And so they, his whole you know, first grade class had this exposure to this new concept. And now they all think it's just kind of like this normal thing that everybody does. Um, I actually don't really remember having any books like that mm -hmm. as a child. But no books. what I do know is I have volunteered at the book fair for countless hours over the past five years. So I know almost every single one of those books inside and out. <laughs> and I definitely would say I would love to have them or if I, I think they'd be a great tool. Like, they, they're any, like for any age, they have many different stages of the process. Like from the actual process of surrogacy itself to the process of like having two dads and like being different. So I think that's like a, a very valuable tool. I remember that book very clearly. Oh, do you? Um, yeah, it was a good book. Mm -hmm. And then my dad's a, one of my dads is a preschool teacher. He brought it to his class. Yeah, awesome. good book. Yeah, should get it. I have a question for the girl. So she mentioned she mentioned she's the only female in her family. Uh huh. My question is, who you during who who drew your hair? Who drew the hair for you? <laughs> my dad. So Both it was fathers <laughs> and. So the, the question is for Emily, and um, because she was raised with two dads, kind of who had what those traditional maternal um, roles that you might have as a mother, you know, doing your hair, or picking out your prom dress, or those kind of things, talk, maybe talking about your cycle, and some of those things that we like defer to the mom on. Um, my, my dads did my hair, for sure. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, when it comes to like menstrual cycle and things like that, I remember being really scared to tell my parents. Um, but I, I did, because they're my parents. Um, I think it can be difficult. Um, and like, maybe should be something that is brought up by the parent, because I don't really remember any of that stuff really being brought up by my parents, but I'm not sure. Did you um, have um, maybe an aunt or a close friend or someone yeah. that you kind of gravitated to for some of those kind of like <clears throat> womanly advice Definitely pieces? Definitely not. Yeah. Um, I think it was really just my friends. Okay. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I never have had any like maternal figure or anything. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of like older women in my life try to try to do that. I've had a lot of people say like, like, I know you don't have a mother figure. I can be that for you. Yeah. It's like, I don't need that. I've got myself. <laughs> That's awesome. All my friends' moms like, oh, I'll be your mom, sweetie. Like, oh no. my god, yeah. <laughs> you, you buy into it, they take you to dinner with, that, <laughs> with their family. Get a, get a meal so out you, of it. Yeah. You learn to, yeah. Get to work it. Yeah. Uh, in the red shirt right there. OK. So the first question is for Tomer about um, any sort of awkwardness that might have come up um, in family things, having your biological mom be your aunt. So I'll let you answer that question. Um, not None at all. I actually don't even think I've ever brought it up with her, as far as I can remember. Um, it's a very, very normal relationship. I think from the outside looking in, you wouldn't even, you would not be able to tell at all. Um, and then the second question. So the second question then was, have you guys um, participated in any sort of counseling or therapy or conversations, um, either um, in groups with other people who were, um, you know, working, having gay dads or being born through surrogacy, um, or just individually? And again, pass on any question you don't want to answer. Um, yeah, I can start. Um, I've not had any therapy or counseling, but something I have had, which has been extremely valuable, I think, is a lot of experiences with children of LGBT parents. Um, so th that was with um, our family vacations. They have club getaway. Actually, I met Emily there. 
Um, I also went to a summer camp called Camp Highlight, which is a week-long sleepaway camp for all children of LGBT uh, parents. So I think that's been tremendously valuable, where I can like see a lot of other kids of LGBT parents where normally in my day-to-day -day life I don't see that many. But, uh, but I think because of that, I've definitely never felt the need to go to any sort of counseling or group therapy. Um, I've never done any like therapy, but yeah, I did our family. We had the Popluck Club, which was like potlucks for gay dads and their kids. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, no, but I, I, I went to a lot of stuff like that. Um, and I think it was really, really helpful in like me understanding and definitely like, I don't know, really normalized it a lot, for sure. Yeah. Um, I never went to any sort of therapy or group thing. Um, or I, I went to Provincetown. They have something called Family Week, which is really fun because it's you know it's a really safe city in Cape Cod. Um, and you go there, and they're like, yeah, that was that's something I definitely recommend, um, and that's something that like I just loved, and I met a bunch of people who had the similar, actually really interesting, similar experiences to me, but like very different lives. Um, they have same-sex same parents from like the South and places like that and like sharing experiences in terms of that is also really interesting. Um, and also we met at like a Jewish youth group yeah. thing and then we with another one of our friends had like a yeah, and the, dad's all, dinner. Yeah, all three of us had gay dads just happened to. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah. So the question is, do you, um, was there any sort of scrapbook or um, uh, documentation of the surrogacy journey itself, of, you know, up through to your birth? No. Oh. Um, yeah, for me, I do have some sort of that. Like, I know my parents have this picture of the four embryos that they transferred, and two of them are, <laughs> yes, two of them are me and my sister. Um, there's definitely tons of pictures of, like, our surrogate and that process. Um, no, like, organized scrapbook, but yeah, definitely, like, a lot of pictures and, like, memories. Um, not for me, no. Uh, I was, like, shown a picture once of my surrogate. Then I was shown pictures of my egg donor later in life. Um, but no, <laughs> no scrapbook. Yeah, no. I just have a picture of my surrogate. Sure. Seems like a nice lady. Sure she's uh, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, for, for our two twins up here, how close are you with your twin? Emily? Um, I, I have a, I'm, I'm close with my, my brother. My brother um, is really different from me, for sure. Uh, but we're twins and we're siblings. Um, I think we, we used to really not get along at all when we were younger. Um, we used to fight a lot, but like, I think in the past, like, two or three years, we've gotten, like, so much better, and we're, we're pretty close, yeah. Do you have the same biological dad? Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, yeah, me and my sister also, when we were younger, we used to fight a little bit, and now we're, now we're a little bit closer, but I don't think that's at all related to us having two dads. I think that's just kind of twins in general. Siblings in general. Siblings in general. <laughs> Some days, day to day. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, you've all said that you haven't really had any major problems, like at school and growing up. It sounds quite easy saving, but you're obviously aware that there is a lot of homophobia out there. So, coming from that, with that as your backdrop in your home, how do you feel and react to all of that? So the question is, even though you guys have had pretty smooth lives and have not experienced, it doesn't sound like a ton of um, direct discrimination, um, how do you feel just in general having two dads and knowing that there are people out there who, who have negative feelings towards that? Do you want to start, Tom? We're going to okay. answer um, that question Yeah, before. no, it's obviously very concerning, I think, to see the amount of homophobia. It's also very nice to live in such a, such a city as New York where so many people are so forward thinking. Um, and going off of that, I don't think I would ever see myself thinking of moving 
to the south, I guess, because of that. Um, and just because I've had mostly positive experiences, I, I've had occasional like negative experiences, um, like I guess with classmates or peers, like using the word gay a lot. But I, I don't think it's ever been out of a place of homophobia. It's been out of a place of like immaturity. And whenever that's come up, um, I have like talked with them and kind of brought it up with like some adults, and we've talked about that. But I think for the most part, living in New York City, living in like a, a fairly like progressive area, I think most people are kind of like aware of the homophobia, but are pretty good with dealing with it. Um, I think it's really terrible, obviously, that so much homophobia exists. Um, and I, I like definitely have had people say some some like weird homophobic stuff to me, but I don't really I don't really take anything from anyone. So it's like <laughs> That. It doesn't really matter. Just yell at them. <laughs> um, yeah. I had like, a couple negative experiences with like friends who are like close to me, and you know, friends who are close to you like tease you and stuff. Um, and I had like something where I remember in elementary school, it was like not a big deal, but it was something that like like I came home crying one day, like. Kids were saying, "Oh, do your dads have sex?" And I was like, "You know, I don't really like know." And like, it, and it was, I was like, I, "Like, like, do you?" Well, like, no kid wants to know. Yeah, that. Like, 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 it doesn't matter. If, <laughs> and then, like, you know, like, along with the, I don't know, people making fun of just gay people in general, mm -hmm. saying that's so gay. Of course, like, that's just such a thrown around term. Right. I think that it is a struggle to know that like people are using this word as a slur, um, especially when like your family. It's like it's like insulting your family to use that as you know a negative insult, but it also like in in the long run really makes you stronger. Um, I'd say that growing up with the family that I do has made me like really hypersensitive to, um, and and conscious of what I say and how I act and how I treat others. Mm -hmm. And I think that if anything, like of course, like while it hurt my feelings at the time, it's like allowed me to develop into a much like stronger person, like a more accepting and inclusive person. Um, and it's like, I think my family is like encouraged. In high school, I did like some social action stuff through my Jewish youth group. Um, and I think that, I don't know, that it was like overall, like kind of a struggle that like made me way more mature than my peers. So the question, when you experienced those difficulties or had some of those events, I know Tomer's got a good story about that with the camp. Um, who did you go to? You know, who was your kind of person that you connected with or talked to to work through those when you had those experiences? Um, yeah, so um, as Michelle was saying, um, I had one experience at, at my sleepaway camp. Um, not, not the one, not Camp Highlight, not the one with other LGBT uh, children. Uh, children of LGBT parents, but um, it was a few kids were using the word gay, throwing it around a lot as a slur, and I was very hurt by that. It was also one of the earlier times I was exposed to that. It was around fourth or fifth grade. Um, so I brought it up actually with the camp director, and I, I told him I didn't know what to do. Like I wanted to be friends with them, but I didn't want to call them out on it. And immediately the next day, he came up to my bunk. We had a whole discussion like about what it meant to be gay and like what the word gay meant, but he did it without kind of like singling me out and saying that I had brought it up. And I think that was amazing, it was super helpful. And that like completely changed the dynamic, I think. And these kids using that word, it didn't come out of a place of like hatred for me or for gay people in general. It's just kids are kids, they're, they're, they, they don't know what they're saying a lot of the time. And I think it just took like an adult to kind of show me that and that was really helpful. Um, I think that I, all of those experiences, like when I actually went to someone was when I was younger and I, I probably went to my parents or my friends. Um, but I think as I've gotten older, I've, I've just been able to like deal with it on my own. Yeah. yeah I think you really learn to kind of deal with it yourself. My, like what 
I don't know. I don't really ex like. What do you expect your parents to say when you know they're they are the reason you're being made fun of? And I think that's really hard as a parent to deal with. Um, just like to not only be offended for yourself, but to like know that it's like affecting um, like your your kid. So was there some reservation that you had to uh, to, to talk yeah, to them definitely. about it? Because do, like again, you're kind of putting that on them and knowing that you might yeah. hurt them. I remember like calling my parents the day I got home from school when they were like asking if my parents had sex. And like, I don't know, was, I just remember like being really upset and like, mm -hmm. like I don't know what to do. Like, like they're like, like how is this different from asking if their parents have sex? Like. I don't know. It's like definitely an uncomfortable situation that I put my parents in, yeah. um, but that's just like I don't know. Raising a kid. Th but I think that's just yeah, raising just, any kid. Yeah. You know, again, those aren't those are not unique yeah. to, to gay parents. And we've had awkward conversations with my yeah. kids, or times when they've had to come with mm -hmm. me and not know how to work with something. And that's just part of parenting is dealing with awkward and uncomfortable situations, and with your kids struggling with something and you working through it with them. Um, maybe, yeah, one? yeah, of course. Also, like, like, we know that surrogacy and having two parents isn't, like, the normal thing. And, of course, like, we are pushing towards kind of normalizing it and actually. having it be, like, not something that you have to explain to your kid, where it's just, like, people have kids in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, I don't know, overall, just, like, these experiences are hard, but they are, like, have made me, like, a stronger person. Like, Excellent. yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe one more question, and then we'll get to our thing here. Yeah. So, have you ever thought about that? It's probably going to be a really bad question. If you can pick, do you want to go in your straight time or gay time? If the, so the question is, if you were able to pick, would you um, do this over again, and would you continue this life, or would you um, rather have, um, you know, be able to just be born to a traditional, regular old mom and dad family? I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like I could ask you the same question, and you, I, I like, I have no idea how to answer that because I have no idea what having straight parents would be like. I definitely don't think it's bad having gay parents. I think that it's definitely like made me stronger in a lot of ways, made me more accepting in a lot of ways. But overall, like, I had two loving parents, and that was very, a very good experience growing up for me. And I, I can't say I would have had it any differently. Um, it was just really. It's always been really normal for me. Uh, I, I don't think I'd want it any other way. I'm pretty happy with my family. Yeah. yeah. I'd say like I want, I would want to have my family. Like, I don't know. I've been, I like grew up with like such a diverse family where it's just like, I'm like kind of ahead of the game in terms of understanding things that aren't normal mm -hmm. and kind of being accepting and like just having, I don't know, like both my grandmas, like one of my grandmas, like, like just like the history behind my family. Like one of my grandmas, um, had to escape uh, Austria because of the Holocaust. My other grandma lived in Little Rock during Jim Crow laws. And like n knowing that and having, like uh, during Christmas, I had like a really interesting conversation with my grandma who was from Little Rock about, you know, being discriminated by white people and then having a white child as her mm -hmm. grandchild. Right. And I thought that, I don't know, I was just talking with her and like that conversation was like one of the best conversations I've ever had and like really, made me think like how grateful I am to have such a interesting family. Um, and yeah, so I would choose to have the family that I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, one more question, yeah, and then I'll do my, my final question. Go ahead. I'm curious, because most of the people here are gay guys who were brought up by straight parents, and that we have to come out to our parents and say, okay, tough one. Um, do you have somewhat the opposite point in time where you get to tell your parents, hey, dad and dad, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so the question is, um, you know, you guys were were um, gay, probably with str or likely with straight parents, and had to come out to them. How did you have to kind of the reverse of that? And, and hey, nope, I'm straight. Or maybe not. Maybe you had to come out to them. I, I like jokingly came out. I, no, I don't think I ever <laughs> did. I don't think I ever did. I'm I'm straight. Um, well, yeah, I'm. I don't know. Straight, such a like a term, but I don't know. It's such a label. It's not even a thing anymore. I don't know. It's. I consider myself straight, um, and I just think, 
I don't know. I never really had to come out to them. I like, you know, I was like, dad, dad. I think I saw a video where it's like, dad, dad, I'm straight. And I thought that was a funny <laughs> thing. I thought that was funny. So then I did it to them. They're like, I don't know. I don't, they, they don't find me funny. So. <laughs> but you, you guys do. apparently do. So thank you for laughing at my jokes. I appreciate that. It makes me feel great. Um, I'm not straight. I identify as queer. Um, never came out to my parents. I think I, I never officially came, came out to them. Doesn't, I, I don't know. I think they like knew. Didn't really matter that much. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really need to label myself as anything. Yeah. Um, funny story. I actually wrote my college essay on coming out as straight to my parents. But it was kind of like a metaphor for like how I've grown up differently than other kids. But it's, <laughs> um, it's de it was definitely like almost kind of a joke. It was like, they definitely would, I knew they would accept me either way. It's just I, I eventually one day I kind of told them, but it definitely was not a big deal. Okay. All right, so our last question, which we kind of had before, um, what advice do you have for these prospective fathers, both in um, going through their surrogacy journey um, and then as parents? Yeah, I'll start. Yeah, I'll start. Um, I think it's, it, it'll be easy to get caught up in the details of like, Will my kid get bullied? Like, will having two dads make them feel like an outsider? But I, I, you know, I think what really matters in the end is like what you do after you have your kid. Like, as long as you're giving them that love and support that any two parents, regardless of their gender, should give their child, I think it's going to work out in the end. You know, as long as you have that, your child's going to turn out just fine. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was pretty much going to say the same thing. Um, just be a, a good, kind parent, and that's that's all that really matters. Like your child might go through some stuff when they're younger, maybe I did, um, but like get through it. Can I hear the question again? Yeah. What advice do you have for these guys as they are going through their surrogacy journey to become parents, and then as they are parents? Um, I think just it's really important to like anticipate things or to be more specific like anticipate situations that could arise or questions that your kid could ask you and definitely like talk with your partner or with yeah talk with your partner about like who or like or even like with yourself like if and you're put on the spot like if my kid asked me this question like you you want to like be able to um really answer that and just like i don't know like act with like like be thoughtful with your actions don't and also don't like react, like respond to them. Um, uh, probably parenting books are good, like raising. <laughs> I don't know. I've never raised a child, so. Um, and I would just reiterate, you know, it sounds like you guys had really open and honest conversations with your parents early on and, and knew how you came to be and knew about your story. Um, and then I would just give that advice as well to just be open and, and share that along the way. And if they have questions to answer them. Um, and to just, you know, give them as much love as you got, and they'll, they'll turn out over. They'll be okay. Thank you guys so much. Oh.